it was a beginning time and we accepted it because we knew we were all in this together, you know, to make this hospital go. And it did go. The hard times and the good times, you know, we had both. We were founded in Aachen, Germany in 1845 by a woman who came from a fairly rich family. Her family had a needle factory. Her family on her mother's side were French and they were imprisoned at the time of Napoleon and were really on death row waiting to be put to death when they were finally freed. In fact, her mother made her first communion in prison. Mother Frances uh, was very influenced in her life by a teacher, a laywoman. So Mother Frances first helped in a soup kitchen. She became a third order member of St. Francis. And later, she resisted it, but she founded the congregation. So 13 years after she founded the congregation, we came to America. On the trip to the United States, our sisters were praying to understand God's will and what they should be doing. And one of the passengers on the ship in first class, ours were in the steerage, he got sick and the captain called our sisters to come and care for him. He subsequently died and before dawn, he called them again to be present when his body was lowered into the water. From that experience, they realized that in some way or other, they would be caring for the sick and the dying. You never knew in St. Anthony's what was going to come in, the front door or the back door. You had to be ready for both. <laughs> <laughs> we had a superior there. Her name was Sister Joanne. And she came from near Canada, mm -hmm. up that way, and she liked deer meat. And she used to tell the police, if you ever get a deer or somebody that hits a deer and don't want to bring it in here to us because I like deer meat. <laughs> this one night, the phone rang, and... It was a state trooper, and he was outside the emergency door with his truck and this big deer. And he said, I have a deer here for a sister Joanne. <laughs> <laughs> well, we went down to the kitchen, and we opened up the kitchen, and he brought in this great big deer. We were, what are we gonna, where are we going to put it? So they put it in a big refrigerator. I said, I never had had deer meat in my life, and I had no idea they could even eat it. <laughs> well, anyway, a, a few weeks later, uh, we had our dinner, and the sister in the kitchen said to me, well, did you enjoy those chops that you had for dinner? I said, yeah, the pork chops are very good. They were exceptionally good this time. Did you have pork chops, she said? And I said, sure, they were pork chops. Oh, no, they weren't, she said. They were deer chops. <laughs> When we first got this property, two of our sisters were on a collecting mission to collect food money for the poor. So two were up in this area and they saw a for sale sign. This was a casino. And the superiors came up the next Saturday. They met with the local pastor. And then after that, we purchased the property. That was in the 1920s. So in 1937, this area here became St. Anthony Province. And then two years later, we worked with the doctors to get St. Anthony Hospital underway. In 2000, Sister Margie was here, and this older man in his 80s rang the doorbell. He was an eight-year-old boy when his parents sold this property to us. He was now in his 80s, and he returned to see what we had done with it. And he was very pleased that it was turned into this campus for health care. One day, the sister who was in charge of obstetrics, she said, you have to come up and help me with the patient up on obstetrics because if she delivers and the doctor doesn't come, you'll have to come in with me. Well, like me, I didn't know anything about <laughs> nursing. I was down in the business office. <laughs> so anyway, I, in obedience, went with her up to the fourth floor. She's putting this white gown on me, and I'm praying oh, that doctor better come soon because I don't <laughs> want to go in there. I don't know what to do. And anyway, she kept telling me, now, don't worry, don't worry, I'll tell you what to do. So anyway, I just got the white coat on. When the door opened and the doctor arrived, I said, thank <laughs> God, God, you're here. I think one of the things that was unique in the history of St. Anthony's, it remained open 
on the providence of God because most of the time the bottom line was red rather than mm-hmm. black, uh-huh. but there was a need and God always seemed to provide. It was very difficult to even pay the bills, you know, because money did not come in. When the farmers came, they would come with a couple of bushels of potatoes. They had lots of onions that were brought in. The apple orchards up here, they ate a lot of applesauce, but that was all given to the hospital in payment of their care, and we accepted it. Many of them didn't pay their bills, but we accepted whatever they gave. It's, it's nice to see the progress it's made now, you know, from those early days. It's good when I look down at that building from my room upstairs, and I look over there and I say, the lights are still on in St. Anthony's, and they're still working over there. When people think of the Franciscan Sisters of the Poor, I would like them to think of us as women who give themselves to the poor and suffering humanity, no matter of race, color, no matter who they are, giving our whole self to them, loving them as God made them, especially those who are in need, the very, very poor, those who are poor in spirit, those without love. And so as a Franciscan sister of the poor, that's what I would like people to think of us as sisters who would be willing, no matter what, to go where there is a need. And I believe that um, by our hospitals, by our social service centers, we have been there for the people who are in need. Being a quiet healing presence, that's how I would like the Franciscan Sisters of Poor to be remembered.